My name's Mary Lynn. I'm 53 and I'm on disability. I live in a house, but it's not a house. When you first walk in my door, you immediately see a stack of boxes. If you look to your left, you see another stack of boxes. No matter where you go in my home, you see boxes. You never know what you're gonna be stepping on, what's under something. To walk into my bedroom is like walking into a minefield, literally. My name is Jacob, I'm 14, and Mary Lynn is my mom. <gasps> my house is cluttered and you can't really walk anywhere. <sighs> we can't cook stuff in the oven because we have stuff in the oven. My bedroom has clothes everywhere. I only have half a bed that I sleep on. I trip over a lot of things at the house, and that really frustrates me. I get mad and like kick it out of my way because I get tired of just falling and stuff like that. Jacob has told me that he would rather live in foster care or anywhere other than here with me. I had gotten so fed up with the mess that I just wanted a way out, that I could get out of the house, go to foster care or something like that. So I went to my daughter and said that my mom was um, being abusive and they ended up calling CPS. Two women showed up at my door and they were investigators for CPS. I honest to God thought it was some kind of a prank. And then I realized this was not a joke. They were for real, and this was happening. I don't think my mom would be trying to clean up if CPS wasn't involved. And it's kind of depressing that she wants to do it because of that instead of doing it for me or for us. I'm Jennifer, I'm 28, and I'm Mary Lynn's oldest daughter. When my sister and I were little, our houses were always spotless, organized. If I needed something, my mom always knew exactly where it was at. I mean, the craziest thing, she would say, you know, it's over on the desk on the right-hand side underneath the stack of papers. Everybody has something that they want to hold on to, trinkets and things that are important and special to them, but really, I'm tired of feeling like I parent her in this situation, and I'm ready for her to be my mom and a, and a grandmother. My name is Amanda. I'm 25 years old, and I'm Mary Lynn's youngest daughter. Growing up, my mom was a normal mom. She took care of us. She had a clean house all of the time. She made like seven course dinners every night, and uh, she was just fun to be around. And when I was about 18 or 19, and that's really where the hoarding started, when my stepfather left my mom. I went into a major panic, started calling every single friend he had. No one had seen him, nobody knew anything about, and didn't, I couldn't find him. Her stuff is filling a void that she has and that she's had since her and my stepfather got divorced. It hurt me to know that my mom is choosing to keep these possessions in her house when she knows that these possessions in her house are keeping me and her grandchildren away. She's using this stuff to kind of keep herself company and to kind of comfort herself. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to go ahead and start the meeting by discussing some of your goals. I'm Geraldine Thomas, and I'm a professional organizer. What do you hope to get out of this? A new life. A new life, okay. Mary Lynn is somebody that I have great concerns dealing with. 
we know that you're experiencing a lot of anxiety about this process, so we're going to try our best to be very gentle. I'm just worried about keeping her mood level the whole time. All right, let's go. Right, let's go. This is a keep. Mm -hmm. Keep. Okay. And all four of these chairs. What about this? I don't understand. I've about had this that either. forever and ever, and it's an antique, and I love it. But what are you going to do with it? Use it. But where, Mom? Until the house is cleaned out, I'm not sure. Uh, okay. But I know I'm going to keep it. <laughs> okay. My name is Dr. Renee Renardi. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in compulsive hoarding behavior. She has an extremely difficult time making any types of decisions, you know, trying to find a use and a purpose for everything in the house. Then look, another sleeping bag. That's been around since... Jennifer. Weekend. I'm just saying. If you keep up the tone, you can go. Because I can't donate. deal with it. I can go. I know that they're very disappointed in me, and they expected the whole house to be clean and shiny and sparkling and a brand new house today. Things don't happen that way. You don't know what's important to me, and you don't know what I have plans for. All this time we've been standing around doing nothing today, we could have been loading Jennifer, half this stuff will you please up and just sending it to someone that could use it. Bring it down a couple turns, please. There's no bringing it down, Mom. I'm to that point. I can't take it. I can't take it. You're not listening. You're not hearing. I'm you hearing. Hear what I don't want to hear you when you scream at me. I've been screamed at, yelled at all my damn life. I don't have to take it from you. Mom, this consumes your life, and I'm tired of every time I get on the phone with you, this is what it's about. You need help. You've got to get this done. You've got to get that done. You have no help. And I'm tired of it. Mandy, you know what? When people say they need help, they need help. You have all the help today that you could use. Today. We haven't even filled up one truck, and you wonder why we're pissed off. You show love through your actions. Well, start showing it. Because to me, you're choosing all of these possessions over your family. Well, you we're think here to what you want. We're here to support you, Mom. You need and to the go only reason, read your Bible. The only reason that I called this show was so that you could get the help that you and Jacob deserve, and so your grandkids can come over here, and they can't. If you've just excluded me from your lives. Totally. I know nothing about what's going on in your lives. You live a mile away from me. This whole situation is just ridiculous. I just feel like we're not getting anywhere, and I feel like we're wasting time. We're leaving. this. Even I wouldn't wear that. All the paper's being sorted through, so. Good, good, good. But a lot of it can go. Oh, I I know that. Uh, believe me, I know that. <laughs> as long as you remember that. <sighs> Cleansing. Cleansing. The hutch can go. OK, so the hutch and the mattress, Cheryl? Box Antonio, springs. Whoever. Demetrius. All of it. OK. Send it. Go. Okay. I have crossed that bridge, so to speak, of being able to say, OK, it's OK to let this go. Bye. You're not going to die without it. Proud of you. Thanks. Yay. <laughs> you feel good about the progress you've made? You did fill up a truck today. Is that it? That's it? Right. Go wash your neck. Get your ears, too. I was 
very, very emotional when I saw her like that, just because, you know, I've wanted this for so long for her, so I can, you know, hardly imagine how she feels actually being able to walk in her room and see it look like a room for the first time since she's moved in. You know, I don't have enough words to tell you how valuable this is. Well, we love you. We do love you. And I'm really glad to feel the love again. I'm telling you. Well, we're it's been gone for too long. Time. We're so proud of you. You have no idea. I think now our family will actually get the chance to spend time together, quality time, and everything not be so consumed um, with the junk and the anger and the frustration. Our main goal uh, was achieved, and that was to create an atmosphere that was safe for Jacob. I love Can it. Can you feel how much bigger it is in here now? Oh, it's a nice I love bed. it so much. Good. Jacob, what are you going to tell Child Protective Services when they come back in? Do you feel I'm comfortable? Staying. I'm staying. You're staying. Uh huh. I know he is so happy. I can just, I um, mean, I can see it. I can feel it. It just is like coming out of his pores, you know? It's, and it's just such a great feeling. I see hope and I see a life again. Take care, you guys. Bye. Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs>